I don't claim you can have a better time with Colt 45 than without it. But why take chances? The power of Colt 45. It works every... Reaper Man here with something truly unique, and I should know because I made it. So this is the Billy D. Williams Colt 45 Dude Stick. And I made this as a bit of a showpiece that sits down in my I Love Me cabinet next to my Fatal Fury box set down there. So what this is, is this Neo Geo controller, fully functional, although for reasons we'll, I'm sure we'll get into, it's not probably not going to be the ideal stick to use. But it's, uh, it's done up in the, uh, the Colt 45 livery from the, uh, the Billy D. Williams era of Colt 45. Now this started life as what's known as a Red Octane controller. And that's the, the brand name. Originally this was actually for PlayStation. And this controller was for Soul Edge, I believe, based on the labels that used to be under all the buttons. Now, this controller is built a little poorly, and Red Octane does have a reputation for that. For example, you can see a little bit of the artwork down here. So it seemed like what they did for the artwork is they laid down a piece of, I don't know, um, construction mesh or something, and just spray painted a little pattern over this half of it. So basically what I had to do is I had to completely clean the thing off with a toothbrush and toothpaste and scrub as much of the paint as I could. I couldn't get this paint because this corner down here was actually glued which fused it all down and luckily that's not the case anymore. Another problem with this stick is over here at the edge it is actually easy to get the, uh, the, the fat folds in your hand kind of pinched down into it so this is kind of a painful stick. It's also not built especially well. This uh, T-molding up here is actually just tape, and we can see it drying and flaking off a little bit. When we get around to the back, we'll, uh, we'll examine that. Also, it seems that they made this out of uh, plexi versus something like a macrolon, and the tension or compression that these buttons are putting on there has started a crack going. That eh, crack's not all the way through yet, but I know at some time I'm going to have to redo this stick. That's okay, because I actually have a second set of artwork for this stick anyway without the signature, and I'm hoping one of these Comic-Cons, Billy D. Williams, is going to stop by and I can have him sign into the box and give me that little bit more authenticity of this thing. Anyway, let's flip this thing over and we'll have a look at, at the back side for a little bit here. Because the back side tells its own story. So this thing actually had foam adhered to it, and I had to chip that off to even get into the thing. It's... Uh, here you can actually see that this uh, T-molding is actually just tape. In fact, I've had to scotch tape some on because it dried off and uh, shattered. Because that's just what it does. So it's built up as a basic box down here, and then this little lip extends down. A little bit similar to how mass sticks do it. But at the same time, not, not built particularly well. Another thing you'll notice is that this thickness here, this is actually what the entire stick is made of. This is three-quarter MDF. Which means, <laughs> if we flip this back around for a second, that the amount of um, stick sticking out is a little bit less than it could be. And trust me, I hit this with my sander for actually several hours to even get that much stick out. And uh, I don't have a wood shop here, so that's why I chose to remodel a stick instead of uh, making my own stick. Uh, I can cut plexi, and that's about all I can do here. So uh, let's come back in a second once I've loosened these screws. Okay, and a quick cut later, and I've got all six of the screws out, but before I do the big reveal on this thing I spent too much effort on, let's just take a second here and look at what this looked like before I even started this thing. So, as you can see from this picture, this was a total rat's nest inside. There's a little piece of perf board attached to the, the front surface, and that perf board contains some kind of a chip that used... PlayStation encoder, whatchamadu, don't know, don't care, the thing was absolutely a mess inside, I ripped all that stuff off, and there was these kind of horrible Chinese controls in it that were, they looked outwardly American style, but they were really not, they actually looked pretty similar to what I see on those arcade one-up systems. Anyway, let's pop this thing off that I've been holding up here, and see what it looks like after I've had my way with it. So as you can see, I spent way too much time cable managing this thing, and I put way too nice a components on a stick that I never really intended to use. 
So as you can see down here, this is actually the full pinout for this uh, this bus bar up here, or whatever kind of bar it is. So it's got the uh, up, down, left, right, start, select, ground, A, B, C, D, and 5 volts. Everything's connected except for the 5 volts because nothing in this stick needs 5 volts, so I don't know where I'd put it. I mean, the cable connector is connected, but there's nothing nothing feeding it. So apparently I made this thing in December 2015, and I don't, I do not know who I intended to read that sticker. Maybe some archaeologist in the distant future, or somebody at my estate sale, who knows. But anyway, this is what it looks like when you spend way too much time cable managing something. As you can see, all the grounds are, are neatly looped together, and everything's in a quick disconnect in case you have to change a switch out, which nobody's ever going to use this stick. It just hurts too much. But... Anyway, I thought I'd give everybody a look at the, the uh, weirdest of the custom arcade controllers that I have ever built. This is the Lando Calrissian or Billy D. Williams Colt 45 Dude Stick. A fully functional stick that you probably wouldn't want to use because it's a red octane. Till next time, Reaper Man out.